Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Wrestling Rhyme Time. A part of my journey with this channel in 2017 to hashtag make wrestling fun again. And, and I think we need that. And I think you want that. And ultimately, you've got to have that. Just give me one more second, please, and we'll go ahead and get started. Oh, that's nice. Nice and smooth. That's what the label says. But perhaps next time, I can find something that will help me take a little bit more of the edge off. But, you know. Anyways, last time on Wrestling Rhyme Time, I read to you a Roman Reigns story, Chapter 1. And today, we continue with a Roman Reigns story, Chapter 2. I know it'll be fun for me, and I most certainly think it will be fun for you. So let's get started. When we last left off, the shield had just split. Here comes Roman's big singles push. Didn't want it? <laughs> well, tough shit. Straight to a title shot. The WWE did insist, but not for Rollins or Ambrose. The hardcore fans were super pissed. Fans panties in a bunch. His push they tried to thwart him. How did WWE address it? <laughs> A feud with Randall Keith Orton. At SummerSlam, the two faced. The RKO versus the Spear. Of course Roman's gonna win. Stick that up your rear. Now was the time for revenge against the architect named Seth. Don't give these two the mic, or the fans will be bored to death. Just six days before, the Night of Champions show, Roman got a legit injury, and the match was a no-go. It was a legit hernia that caused Roman to miss some time. To delay his WrestleMania push? Mm -mm, now that would be just asinine. Injury came out of nowhere. Maybe he washed his hair too hard. Nah, next time you stroke your Samoa, switch up your hands, you retard. He was destined to win the Rumble. Of this, there was never a doubt. While you root for your indie guys who kick, he'd rather have friends with backstage clout. Ugh. Roman was the one and only choice. To say otherwise is just lying. But history has definitely bore out. He was a much better choice than Daniel Bryan. <laughs> Shots fired. WWE, though, really tried. They brought in The Rock. It wouldn't matter that night, the Philly crowd would still mock. And then on the internet, the fans all bitched on Twitter. If we don't get our way, we'll flush our merch down to shitter. The rest of the world asked, what the hell is the matter? Look at all those childish wrestling nerds. In mom's basement, getting fatter. Their network subscriptions, they had planned on purging. But of course they came back, acting like Mark wrestling virgins. So of course Roman beat Daniel at the show called Fast Lane. What did hardcore fans do? Naturally, just bitch and complain. With the Wretch and Stone plans, WWE went full steam ahead. Roman main eventing WrestleMania against the two-move suplexing meathead. And so the buildup was lame. The fan interest was poor. WWE tried to fix that with a belt tug of war. <laughs> gimme that, gimme that. Now the moment was at hand. The time had finally come. If Roman won the world title, fans would cry it was dumb. Brock Lesnar and Roman. Would the match be a whiff? No, it was a pleasant surprise. It felt real. It was stiff. Roman's victory was close. Fans about to throw up their dinner. And then a miraculous surprise. Out comes Seth Rollins, the Money in the Bank winner. First time ever at WrestleMania. It honestly felt quite right. It wasn't Lesnar or Reigns, but Rollins who won the belt that night. 
try to haste, chase the heel champ seemed like the right way to go. Apparently some idiot felt different. Nah, here, feud with the big slow. How truly fitting it was. Feud ends with last man standing. It did nothing to help. It only hurt Roman's branding. At Money in the Bank, I thought this moment would be when he'd win the world title till out came the Wyatt family. Over the next couple of months, the company wasted our time. Neither guy got more over another WWE mid-card crime. While the fans wanted Vince to get off the Roman high horse, it was actually Seth Rollins who got the bigger push forced. But then a freaky thing happened. Seth tore up his damn knee. A tournament would be held. A new champion. Yippee! He beat Big Show Cesaro then Alberto Del Rio. We all knew how it would end. You didn't have to be Miss Cleo. In the finals against Ambrose, that Survivor Series night, the Roman Empire would reign, and it felt oh so right. Even then, God had a plan. Oh, what could it be? Seamus is cashing in? Oh, shit. Fuck me. Okay. From the breakfast club, then, a lesson was taught. Because we all know Triple H needs his guaranteed WrestleMania spot. Mm -hmm. The next month on Raw, at stake his career, Roman was champ once again. Merry Christmas, Happy Fucking New Year. At the next Royal Rumble, against 29 others, he'd defend. Surely his second world title reign would quickly meet its end. 29 had entered. Who would be number 30? Ugh, oh, praise the Lord! The game's about to get dirty. Usually hardcore fans don't like part-time vets. But if means stopping Roman, you can call off all bats. Of course Hunter would win. And it didn't seem odd. When even his biggest haters were saying, Praise God! Once again onto Fastlane, his title rematch on the line. Dean Ambrose and Brock Lesnar? <sniffs> Roman Reigns would be just fine. For the second year running, the WrestleMania main event. I prayed for that match. It was like it was heaven sent. The hardcores were hurting, like they were chopped in the crotch. They all opposed this main event, said it would be an epic botch. If Roman wins, we riot, they all shouted like sheep. But the showdown did happen when the fans were tired, asleep. Finally, the fans blasted Reigns' win. Engage flaming keyboard fingers of fire. The Samoan had conquered God. Long live the Roman Empire. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is chapter two of a Roman Reign story. I'll be back again later this week with the conclusion of the Roman Reign story, chapter three. Until then, I'll see you later. I hope you enjoyed. Because I know I sure did.